the revolution in big data and sensing is going to uh, be very, very important in using resources more efficient. It allows companies to know what is happening with their inputs and how to maximize efficiency. So not only can GE monitor the efficiency of how well their jet engines are working up in the sky, but um, everyone who operates uh, fleets of cars and trucks can monitor uh, fuel efficiency and tweaks uh, to optimize that. In the farms around our country, it's becoming possible to mo monitor how much fertilizer is being wasted and just running off with the rainwater. There are many corporate examples also uh, where companies have figured out there's much more efficient ways to move goods around the country. Getting out of trucks and into rail or even ships is a much more efficient use of energy. Ocean Spray we worked with to help them um, move their product by rail instead of truck. They reduced greenhouse gas pollution by 60%, saved 40% of their costs of, of trucking the product. That's a big deal. There, there should be uh, rewards for efficiency. We, there should be opportunities in the electric sector for companies that use energy more efficiently and are helping the grid stay in balance to be rewarded for that. And uh, right now, um, too often, the incentives have been set up just to maximize consumption of electricity as opposed to maximize the efficient use of electricity. There's a variety of barriers. In many of our states, in the United States, uh, electricity is regulated in a way that keeps the market from working, that keeps efficiency from paying back to businesses in the way that it should. For example, um, the grid needs to be balanced between supply and demand. In some states, uh, you can balance that by not only adding more electrons to the system to meet demand, but you can balance that by uh, paying customers to lower demand. In other states, only additional supply is paid for. So in, in those areas of our country where uh, people can be rewarded by lowering demand or shifting demand to the nighttime, um, that encourages efficiency and in, in other states there's no such incentive. One of the things they're doing in China is they've started pilot cap and trade programs in one third of the Chinese economy. Uh, seven cities and provinces uh, are experimenting with ways to cap and reduce greenhouse gas emissions in preparation for what the Chinese government says will be a national cap and trade system. The idea when you have a limit, a reducing limit on the amount of carbon pollution you can throw in the atmosphere is you create a big incentive for uh, resource efficiency. It turns out that 40% of the global warming we're going to see in the next 20 years is from short-lived uh, potent greenhouse gases like methane and black carbon and hydrofluorocarbons. And it turns out that in the oil and gas industry, in order to reduce the emissions of methane, which is 84 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide, in order to reduce those emissions by 50%, the incremental cost would be less than 1% of the cost of a well. Six-tenths of 1%, according to the uh, International Energy Agency's recent report. Surely, um, this is one very practical initiative f um, to reduce greenhouse gases going into the sky. We need to, uh, with businesses and NGOs and governments, um, get about the hard business of um, using resources more efficiently and reducing emissions rather than keeping increasing it.